This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I rejoice to be with you all here this morning uh, in God's house, doing what God created us to do, and that is worshiping God, praising God, and enjoying fellowship with God and with one another. Uh, before we get going with our worship, just a few things. I want to make sure that if you that you're here, you get credit for it. You know, you want to make sure you get credit. And so, in your bulletins, there's a QR code. Scan that, and you will get full credit. Um, also, I want to let everybody know, and you may have already seen this, but if you didn't, um, the I-35 Thanksgiving meal is coming up this Thursday, which is Thanksgiving, and we're we're kind of short or at least last time I checked, we were kind of short in terms of volunteers to help out at the rest stop and also especially cooking uh, food. And so we're actually, or at least before, earlier this morning, we were in danger of not having enough people to do both sides of the highway. And so if, if you want to help with the cooking, if you want to help with the, with the being there and, and greeting people and serving people, it's an awesome opportunity. I've heard from a lot of people who've done it say it's kind of life-changing. It's, it's a really, really cool thing. People who are coming along and, and, and uh, who were serving really, really, really appreciate it. Um, also want to encourage everybody, if you're not in a Sunday school class, get in one. Uh, you can check them out. I actually sat in on one of them this morning. It was a great experience. It was awesome. And so uh, I encourage everyone to do that. Um, the, the Salado Community Thanksgiving service is this evening. It's this evening at 6, at 6 o'clock at the uh, Catholic Church. And we're going to have pastors from several of the, of the churches around here, including myself, uh, at, that, at that worship service. So you don't want to miss that. And let me see. <clears throat> uh, we got this insert in the uh, bulletin. And it lists all the Advent stuff that's going on. And it's almost more than you can fit on one page. I mean, there's lots and lots of stuff going on. And so you might get your calendar out and put some of this stuff on there because uh, it's going to be really, really good. And with that, let us enter into worship with prayer. Almighty God, loving God, um, we come before you this morning just taking a breath. We've, we've been through a long week and we're looking to go into another one. A lot of us are entering into the holiday time uh, with a little bit of trepidation, uh, maybe a little bit of concern, a little bit of worry. Uh, and Lord, so we, we, just, we just welcome, we, we praise you for this opportunity you've given to us to take a minute, to just breathe, to rest in your presence, to rest in the presence of one another, not to do anything, but just to be here, Lord. You've invited us to be here with you and with one another. Lord, help us. Give us your spirit. Give us your spirit this morning. Fill us, fill this place with your spirit. Enable us to, to give you that praise. Enable us to give you that thanksgiving. Enable us to just be here with you to love you, and to love one another. Lord, we ask this in the name of the one you sent to save us, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We stand with me as we worship together this morning. Come, let us worship our King. He's done great things.
as we come to our time of corporate prayer together this morning, we want to remember everyone that you will find um, in the center of your bulletin, those in our church family and close friends who are um, in need of prayer and of support. And one of the ways that we can do that for each other is to lift each other up in prayer. And we want to um, remember those in our church family and community, especially um, those who are dealing with illness um, or upcoming surgeries. Um, personally, myself, this is going to be a little bit of a stressful Thanksgiving because my dad is going to have knee surgery right after Thanksgiving, which normally wouldn't be that big of a deal if you're 20, but when you're almost 80, a total knee replacement's a big deal. So uh, we could definitely use your prayers for his health as he goes through this major surgery. Um, we also have several others in our church family who are dealing with major illnesses and we wanna lift them um, up in prayer. So if you would please um, pray with me this morning. This morning, God, we thank you for everything that we delight in, for the cool of autumn days, for nature and art, for the rhythm of poetry and music. For all of our achievements and success, we thank you. For a good joke, for work well done, for love and friendship and all of the gifts to our body and soul, we give thanks. Most of all, we delight in your salvation, the knowledge of your love the assurance of eternal life we have through Jesus, our Savior. So while we give thanks, we want to commend to you those who do not have, those who must work in harsh conditions, or those who have no work, those who feel that lives are drab and gray, those whose poor health takes away the joy of living, those who are lonely and who may have no home of their own to go to this Thanksgiving, we lift them up to you. May they find help and comfort that they need. And may we be the hands and feet of your body that give that to them. May we also give spiritual encouragement to enable them to have hope and courage. So we pray for the elderly in our congregation who need your help, asking for clear faith and for support they need. We pray for those of us in our middle years that we may have wisdom in our choices and may we recover a childlike sense of wonder. We pray for our young people, asking for them good opportunities in life and that their amb ambitions may include the desire to serve as you have served us. May we continue to seek God at every age of our lives that has been made known to us through Jesus Christ, our greatest friend of all. So we bless you and thank you, God, for all that you have done, for the great company of saints who have gone before us, and we pray with them as we honor and praise your holy name this morning, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as we are taught to pray together as one family. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Children, it is time for our children's sermon with Miss Christie. So come on up and hear the children's sermon because there's candy. No, that's not the reason. Because it's going to be a good sermon and there's candy. There is candy. Did it go on? Oh, far out. It actually worked. Good morning, all. Today's sermon is In Heaven Forever. You know what a riddle is? Well, it's a word puzzle. A question that makes you think. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes riddles are funny. I'm sure you've heard this one. Why did the chicken cross the road? 
The answer is to get to the other side, and I'm glad you knew that. That's really cool. Here's another couple of favorites of mine. Mary's father has four children. Three are named Nana, Nini, Nainai, and what's the fourth child's name? Her name is Mary. The father had four daughters. One was named Nini, Nana, Nainai, and who is the fourth one? Mary. Thank you. What is full of holes but can still hold water? Very good, a sponge. Riddles have been around since the time of Jesus, maybe longer. One day, Jesus was approached by a group of Sadducees, religious leaders who didn't believe in the resurrection or the happiness of heaven. The Sadducees were trying to trick Jesus into agreeing that there was no resurrection. They asked him to answer this riddle. The law of Moses says that if a man dies leaving a wife with no children, his brother should marry the widow and have a child who will carry on the brother's name. Well, suppose there were seven brothers. The oldest one married and then died without children. So the second brother married the widow, but he also died. Then the third brother married her. This continued until all seven brothers had married the same woman. Finally, the woman died. So tell us, whose wife will she be after the resurrection, since all seven were married to her? My, that's a tricky riddle, isn't it? Listen to Jesus' answer. Jesus said marriage is for people here on earth, but in the age to come, those who are raised from the dead will not marry or be married. Not only that, they will never die again. They will live forever as the children of God. And that is Luke 20, 26. After Jesus answered their riddle so wisely, no one dared to ask him any more questions. Now, you and I know that Jesus promised us that if we love him and trust in him, we will live forever in heaven with him. Isn't it sad that some people don't believe there is a resurrection and eternal life in heaven? Oh, that reminds me of another riddle. Why were the people in today's Bible lesson called Sadducees? Since they didn't believe in the resurrection or the happiness of heaven, they were sad, you see. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are happy today that you have promised us eternal life in heaven. Thank you that heaven is going to be amazing. In Jesus' name, amen. And now for the candy. All right, would the ushers please come down with the offering place? Um, let's get ready to worship. Right? We've, we've been worshiping with our words, with our songs, with our prayers, and now we have an opportunity to worship God through our giving, through our offering. Um, God uh, has, uh, ha has given us the opportunity to, to know him, to love him, and to be in relationship with him. And one of the ways we do that is by imitating him, and that is through our giving. So would you join me now in, in prayer? Loving and almighty God, we thank you for this gift of life. We thank you for the gift of salvation through your son, Jesus. We recognize that it is through that sacrifice that we are made whole. Please accept these, give, these gifts, this offering that we give to you now as an expression of that thanksgiving, as an expression of our praise, and, and through this offering, help to draw us closer to you. 
Loving God, we ask all of this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus. Amen. God is good. God is, can I get an amen to that? God is good. 
praise God that we got an opportunity to sing of God's goodness to us. That is awesome. Thank y'all so much. So the the reading this morning is uh, from the book of Philippians, from Paul's letter to the church in Philippi, and it's chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. So Paul writes to them, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of God for God's people. Thanks be to God. So this Thursday is Thanksgiving. I'm having a hard time. I'm still kind of in denial. But this Thursday is Thanksgiving. And the Sunday after, this coming Sunday, is the first Sunday in Advent. And, of course, Advent is the season during which we anticipate the coming of Jesus into our world and into our hearts. And that day is Christmas. And so we're... What this means is we're a little bit more than a month out from Christmas. And as I'm thinking about Christmas, I know I'm a little early, but I'm, I'm thinking about it. And I'm thinking about some, you know, some of the memories that I've got from Christmas's past. Uh, when I was a little kid, we would, uh, my, my immediate family and my extended family on the mom's side, we would go uh, and spend Christmases at this little cabin on Lake Proctor out near Comanche. We'd be there the week before, pretty much the week after. And man, I mean, I, you want to talk about some, some wonderful, peaceful memories. Uh, that, that cabin didn't have central heat, which you would think would be a problem, right? I mean, it would, it would get cold uh, a lot. And with no central heat, what we would do is we would, all us kids, there were eight of us, we would just lie down in front of the fire lie down in front of the fireplace, and, and we would sleep. And I remember just this sense of peace and stillness as, as we were doing that, this sense of this is, you know, everything's right with the world. And even as I was trying desperately, desperately to stay awake uh, to see if Santa would come. Well, my mom since then has told me that it was not at all a peaceful experience for her. <laughs> I mean, she's, she didn't get a wink of sleep because she kept worrying that these logs were going to roll out all over us and catch us on fire. One, one Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve, it actually snowed that Christmas Eve. And so I remember you know, waking up and looking out over the lake at the rising sun and, um, and, and just this... The, the scene, the snow everywhere, and it's covering everything up. I mean, it's just this scene of incredible peace, this scene of incredible stillness. And, and I think most of us have those kind of memories somewhere in our past, right? A, a Christmas season or a Christmas day where you just, you just, everything's right with the world. Peace, stillness, joy, everything's good. And, and, this is reflected in the songs that we sing as we as we enter into this season, right? We'll, we'll in a little over a month, Christmas Eve, we'll be walking out here with our out of here with our candles, singing "Silent Night," "Holy Night," "Sleep in Heavenly Peace." It's a season of peace, and it makes sense that we would sing these kind of songs. It makes sense that we would have these kind of memories because. What we're doing when we enter into Advent as we get towards Christmas, we are celebrating the coming into the world of the Prince of Peace, the one who's big bringing peace to us, the one who's bringing peace to the world. So yeah, sure, we ought to have those kind of memories. We ought to have that kind of peace. And, and so I got a question for y'all. As we look forward to the next month, as we look at our calendars, are you experiencing peace? 
Are, are you experiencing freedom from anxiety as you look at that calendar and all the stuff that's on? I think for most of us, the answer is no. Actually, for a lot of us, we're just dreading it, which is so ironic, right? I mean, this season where we're celebrating the Prince of Peace, we can't find it in our own lives. We can't find that peace for ourselves. In fact, it's, it's, it's amazing the, the the season of Advent, the season of December leading up to Christmas is right behind tax season as the most anxiety inducing time of the year. So why is that? Why, why when we are celebrating the coming into the world of the Prince of Peace are we able to find so little of that for ourselves? But, and, and I think we're going to address that question but before we do I want to talk a little bit about some of those things that bring us the stress, that bring us the anxiety, that rob us of our peace. And so to start off with, I got some shopping bags here. All right, we got a lot of shopping to do. Now we don't do quite as much of it with in person anymore, but we still do. We got a lot of shopping to do. We got a lot of cookies to cook. We got a lot of entertaining to do with, with the family and the in-laws. Some of us got to work. We gotta work hard. Some of us for this time of year, work is an especial source of stress and strain. We got a lot of ugly sweater contests to go to. And this one is ugly. Yeah, ugly and loud. So yeah, we got we got those to go to. We got presents. In addition to buying the presents, we got to wrap them. This is probably my least favorite part of Christmas right here. We got either costume parties or we got to cook turkeys. I'm not sure which one. I think. Let's see. Yeah, I would wear this for the rest of the sermon, but then I wouldn't hear anything that I said. Uh, there's parties, right? We got to go to parties. We got lots and lots of parties we got to go to. We've got lots of parties we got to put on. Uh, more shopping, got more shopping to do. We gotta, we gotta spend a lot of money. You know, get that credit card warmed up. We got uh, our calendars, right? Take that calendar out; it's gonna be full. And then we got the Christmas list. And as I said at the first service, I think this may be like an exact replica of one of my kids' Christmas lists. Or my Christmas list, actually. <laughs> You're looking at me like, yeah, that's yours, buddy. Yeah. So we got all of this stuff going on. We got a, a, we got a nice little pile of stuff here. The stuff that's robbing us of our peace, that's robbing us of, of our joy, that's robbing us of the meaning of this season. Oh, forgot to put my, my uh, mic on. I thought I would make it through this one without messing up, like I did at the last service. Apparently not. All right. Thank you. So now y'all can hear me. I was wondering why y'all weren't laughing at my jokes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so yeah. So we got this big old pile of stuff that's robbing us of our peace. That's robbing us of our joy. And and. Paul, the Apostle Paul, in this passage of scripture that I just read to y'all, he's speaking to a church that is in very much the same shape as we are. He's speaking to a church that is kind of stressed out. Now, we don't know exactly why they were stressed out. We, we think maybe it had something to do with some division going on with the church. It's not something that we've got any experience with. We, we think that probably it involved uh, some Roman oppression going on because that's what the Romans like to do. But whatever it was, they were stressed out. They were not experiencing the peace of God. And so Paul, he's in prison in, in Rome. He writes them this letter when he finds out. So I can, I can just sort of see those, those Philippians, right? This, this church, their, their, their founder, their 
dear, dear friend, Paul, has written them from prison. He's, he's giving them some counsel. He's giving them some advice. He's going to help them through this difficult time that they're going through. So, so they, they all gather together, and, they, and they're excited. It's like, yeah, Paul, he's going to help us. This is going to be great. He's going to tell us how to not be stressed out. He's going to tell us how to get our peace. And so the guy's reading it, and, and he gets to this part, and then he says, don't worry. That's it. Don't worry. And I can just see those Philippians going, really? Paul? Is that as good as it gets? Is that all you got? Because we've tried that. We've tried to just tell ourselves not to worry. It's not working. I mean, what, you think, you think we, just, we just get up in the morning looking for ways to, to make ourselves more anxious? It seems like everything we try, the more of it we do, the worse it gets. So y'all probably noticed in the last couple of weeks, if you've turned on the TV set, that the, Chris, that the uh, Christmas commercials are here. Christmas commercials have arrived. And I'm not a real big fan of the Christmas commercials myself, but there are some that I kind of like, and, and they're the Home Depot commercials, <laughs> you know? And I think it's because they're like doing stuff, and it's manly stuff, right? They're fixing stuff, they're using power tools. And, and every, every one of these Home Depot commercials, they got a tagline at the end. And, and several years ago, the tagline was, let's do this. Y'all remember that one? Let's do this. Let's do this. I mean, I think that could be a tagline for our lives. It could be a, the tagline for our culture, right? Let's do this. If something's wrong, let's do this. Let's fix it. Let's make it better. If I got something going on at home, if I got a problem... I just, I got, all I got to do is go to Home Depot or Ace Hardware and get some pipe and a wrench and some duct tape or whatever it is, and, and I'll be able to fix it. I'll be able to take care of it. I'll be able to do this. The only problem is sometimes I can't do this. So I'm, I'm sorry for making you relive this again. Um, one time, several years ago, we had a hose bib on the outside of our house that was leaking. And it was just old, it just needed to be replaced. So I, um, I went to Home Depot, got me a new hose bib, brought it home, took off the old hose bib, put on the new hose bib. And it was great, man. I was like, yeah, I'm good at this. I know how to do stuff. And then I left town to go to Florida for a seminary class a week-long seminary class. And the next day, I got a text from Kirsten. And it included a picture. And the picture was of my daughter's room and the half inch of water that was on her floor. We had to replace all the floor in the whole house. That was definitely not in the budget. And, and as a result of that incident and, and an unfortunate number of similar incidents over the years, I've, I'm starting to come around to the conclusion that there's just some stuff I can't do. And so now when something happens at the house, instead of saying, let's do this, I'm just as likely to say, let's call someone who can do this, right? And, and that's really the message, I think, that, that Paul has for this Philippian church. Yeah, he says to them, don't worry, but it's not just don't worry, be happy. He doesn't stop there because he knows they can't do this. They can't do this on their own. They can't deal with the stress and the anxiety on their own. They need to call somebody who can do this. And that somebody is God. They need to call on God through prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. 
And, and when he's talking about prayer, he's not just talking about taking a knee on occasion. He's not just talking about getting up in the morning and shooting a prayer to Jesus. He's talking about praying on everything, about everything, all the time. I mean, listen to what he says. He says, he says, by prayer and thanksgiving, don't worry about anything, but in everything, in everything, by prayer and thanksgiving, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will be yours in Christ Jesus. It's going to guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. In everything, pray in everything. He's saying to him, look, if you want this to get any better, you got to put God at the center. you got to put God in the middle of everything. You've got to make God the whole point of your life. And if you'll just do that, if you'll just do that thing, then, then the stress, the worry, the anxiety, all of that stuff will just go. It'll take care of itself. Because next to God, next to the all-powerful, all-loving, all-good, eternal, God, creator of the universe, next to the relationship that that God offers to us, all of that other stuff, all of that stuff that's causing the anxiety and the stress and all of that, it doesn't mean anything. He just says to him, look, put first things first. Put God first. Through prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. See, we human beings, we got a problem. And especially us 21st century North American human beings, we got a problem. We look at the world through the lens of let's do this. Which, for a home repair project, is usually a pretty good way to approach it for some of us. As for our faith, that's not going to get it done. As for our peace, that's not going to get it done. As for our joy, that's not going to get it done. See, these things that I put into this manger, these are just ways that we try to buy ourselves peace. We come to this time of year when we know it's all about peace. When we know it's all about joy and hope, we come to this time of year, we, we remember the memories, we sing the songs, we embrace the season that says to us, this is a time of peace. This is you at peace. But we don't feel it. We don't feel the peace. And so by instinct, we just say, let's do this. Let's fix it. We do all this stuff. We pile all this stuff into that manger. And what Paul is saying to, to this church in, in Philippi, he's saying to us as well, he said, that's not going to get it done. There's only one way to have true peace. There's only one way to experience that peace that transcends all understanding. And that's through Jesus. That's through a, a commitment to, a consecration to Jesus. That's, that's from putting Jesus at the center of everything, at the center of your lives. So as we start into this Advent season next, next week, as, as we celebrate Thanksgiving this, this coming Thursday, as we anticipate the coming of of the Prince of Peace at Christmas. I would like for us to be really intentional. 
really intentional about doing what Paul said, about keeping Jesus at the center. Through prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. All the time and in everything. <coughs> as, we, as we celebrate, as we uh, attend to these parties, as we cook these cookies, as we do it all the stuff that we're going to be doing this, this next several weeks. Let's be intentional about keeping him at the center, about inviting him to the party, inviting him into our lives. Would you join me in prayer, please? Almighty God, you love us. You don't want us to suffer. You don't want us to, to live in anxiety. You don't want us to live in stress. You don't want to live, us to live in despair or fear. You sent your son so that we could live a different, a new kind of life. So that we could live real life in you. So as we approach the anniversary of of you sending a little piece of yourself into the world as we, as we anticipate the coming of your son into our world and into our lives. Help us, because we can't do this ourselves. Help us. Send us your spirit. Send us your love. We ask this in the name of your son, our Lord Jesus. All right, so as we, um, as we finish up our worship together, I want to issue an invitation to anybody who's with us this morning who would like to, to join with us in this family of faith in our communion. Uh, you are welcome to do so. I would love to talk with you about that, and uh, we could do it right here, right now, if you wanted to. Would you stand with us as we close together?
And so now accept this benediction, this good word, and the good word for today is peace. May Christ live in you and you live in him so that his peace is your peace. So that everyone you meet says there's something different about that person. So that everyone you meet says to themselves, and I got to get me some of that. May the love of God, the peace of Jesus Christ, and the joy and communion of the Holy Spirit be yours today and tomorrow and forevermore. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.